Eh, yo no dudo en decir que es uno de los mayores especialistas en anti counterfeiting en Brasil. Uh, desde que lo conozco, creo que casi 20 años está involucrado con anti counterfeiting claro que otros temas también. Así que vamos a tener aquí una, una grande, seguramente otra grande presentación. Uh, José Enrique Werner es miembro de la Asociación de Abogados de Brasil y agente de la propiedad industrial desde 98. Socio de la firma Daniel Simpson, director jurídico de Abral y director secretario de Angardi. Miembro del grupo de trabajo que representa Angardi ante el eh, eh, Consejo Nacional de Combate a Piratería, responsable de la organi organización y administración de campañas masivas contra la piratería en Brasil, responsable de la coordinación y administración de casos de due diligence inteligencia de negocios y análisis de información. Profesor en Emerge, Escuela de, Escuela de Magistratura del Estado de Rio de Janeiro, de propiedad industrial, profesor invitado en el curso de especialización en propiedad intelectual de la Fundación Getúlio Vargas, G.V. Law, del Estado de São Paulo. Uno de los mejores abogados de propiedad industrial en Brasil por la publicación WTR 1000, elegido en 2014, por la publicación brasileña Análisis Advocacia 500, como uno de los abogados más admirados en Brasil en diferentes áreas. Señoras y señores, José Enrique Werner. Thank you very much, Alberto, for the kind words. Uh, I wish I could give this presentation in Spanish, but I can. Sorry to all for this. Uh, it's a shame for me not speaking Spanish. But for, for the sake of a good presentation and to be uh, clearly understood by all, the, all of you, I would prefer to, to speak in English. So uh, I would like to thank you, uh, thank the organization, AZIPI, to, for the invitation. It's an honor and, and uh, it's a very pleasure to me being here presenting in, on behalf of Agadi and a little bit on behalf of Daneman. Uh, I've separated some topics for today. Uh, some of, top, some th of these topics are only introductive uh, to the, the main issue, and the, all, of the, all of the second part will be touching the specific issue that we, we were uh, selected to present to you. First of all, uh, I will give you some words about what's happening in Brazil right now. Uh, we have a different scenario right now from the past uh, 20 years. Brazil uh, is now uh, playing a, a similar role to China because Brazil is becoming uh, like a more productive country instead of only receiving uh, counterfeit stuff from China and other countries. Uh, this is because we have easy access to a heavy and advanced mach machinery, uh, machines that can make very uh, modern stuff, very modern equipment, uh, plastic, uh, molds, everything else. Uh, there is a availability of informal work in Brazil uh, available uh, to work in these factories. Uh, there are cheaper logistics going on because you can imagine bringing all these products from China. I've heard that there are a lot of companies in Brazil uh, and in Latin America that are transferring uh, their, their seats to Paraguay and, and their providers to Paraguay as well. And this is, uh, has the only objective to reduce costs because importing something from China especially a, a very high US dollar rate for, not for us in Brazil right now, uh, it's really expensive. So they decided to, to do this uh, uh, in Paraguay, that is, it's, it's very close to Brazil. Uh, so uh, it, inevitably, there was a growth in the number of factory. Uh, they have capacity to, uh, to supply the domestic and international market. So. I have another new for you. Uh, there are a lot of Brazilian factories exporting counterfeit products for Latin America and other countries from uh, Middle East, uh, Asia, Asia, and Europe. 
there is a large consumer market that accepts these kind of products. Of course, uh, the products are cheaper. And uh, in the middle of a crisis, uh, no one wants to buy a very expensive product. So this is why these are very accepted in Brazil. Uh, there is another uh, aspect as well. All products coming from China, uh, going through Paraguay, Uruguay, Argentina, Chile, Panama, they reach Brazil for our consumer. Uh, there is a, a, a counterfeit, as I, as I mentioned, there are some counterfeits being exported. And of course, uh, we are missing some enforcement action to uh, diminish the problem in Brazil. As I said, economic crisis is uh, putting uh, the problem in the highest uh, position. Local business uh, that previously surf surfed, uh, like we are in Aruba, surf is very famous here. So we surfed in a, in a very uh, unrealistic economic acceleration in the, the past five years. And this uh, is giving the companies hard times because we are now in the crisis. And uh, because of that, these companies, they are trying to find ways not to shut down and work uh, illegally. It's, a, it's an option, definitely. There, is a boom, uh, there was a boom of uh, illegal companies, uh, industries, manufacturers, factories in the last five years. Uh, already regions known uh, to produce counterfeit product, products, they grown exponentially. Entire new regions uh, arose, uh, emerged in the last few years, uh, they, and they are getting specialized in some kind of uh, uh, products. Uh, I will list some of them as examples for you. And uh, as I said as, as well, uh, there is an insufficient persecution of these crimes that you already know, they are connected to other uh, dangerous crimes like uh, traffic, drug trafficking, uh, weapons trafficking, and uh, other kinds of, of, of crimes like uh, terrorism. There is a cell, uh, I, someone said yesterday in one of the presentations, uh, without, with no detail, uh, and I, I will do the same, but it, it is true that it is a cell in the, the tri-border, financing uh, illegal terrorist activities. Well, I'll just show you a little bit about Angardi and what he, she, uh, it is doing in Brazil. Uh, the reasons for creation of Angardi was basically uh, the request from clients uh, to have another kind of tool to interact with enforcement authorities and uh, all the political economic, and, and the, three, uh, uh, the three areas of the government, executive, legislative, and judiciary. So this is why we created a guardian under the firm, but is now, uh, 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 from, from some, some years to now, it, ha it has his own life and is independent from the firm, and we are uh, conducting some kind of works over there that are very valuable for protecting IP. It's an important tool uh, to, to, for concrete response from, for, for the Brazilian authorities, a powerful group to fight piracy and other legal and harmful activities, because uh, isolated efforts, uh, sometimes they show inefficient to fight piracy. We need uh, sometimes to get together, and it's, it, it's, I, when I show you the, the members and participants, you'll we'll, we'll notice that uh, we have uh, competitors, and, and piracy activity in Brazil is something that put together even competitors uh, to fight against piracy uh, side by side. Uh, Angardi deals with not only with piracy, but also with uh, patent, industrial designs, trademarks, copyright, unfair competition, consumer protection, and franchise. This is the scope of the activities that are, are discussed under Angardi uh, meetings. Uh, we have the main goals to uh, develop uh, new legislation. Uh, we, are, we, are, we have participated actively in suggesting the new uh, content of the next uh, criminal procedure code and criminal code in Brazil. 
uh, improve uh, existing law enforcement specific related to IP as well, uh, organize training, organize seminars for authorities, and sometimes organize uh, uh, campaigns to fight piracy uh, with the members. Uh, some members asked us to uh, develop some kind of work to uh, raid areas, and we do this under Angadi activity. These are uh, some of the participants and members of Angadi. We can see that we, have, we are a multi-sector uh, association, and we are trying to connect interesting interest from all of them uh, to put, put in place an uh, effective strategy to fight piracy in Brazil. Well, let's enter in the, the main issue here. Uh, and this is my question for you. Why uh, do we need private investigations in Brazil? So I, I will give you some of the most important reasons for that. Uh, in the past, uh, counterfeiting activity was mostly imported from China and other Asian countries, and Paraguay, sure. Uh, but the fact is that uh, more recently, uh, uh, the, this condition has turned to something more complicated. And at that time, when we had only uh, counterfeit products coming from abroad, it was easy, very easy to investigate. And this maybe justifies some companies and some operators to think that an investigation in Brazil is something easy to do, something, uh, you know, a piece of cake uh, to do uh, in, for a low cost, uh, from a day to another, a fly-by-night operation, but this reality is not uh, in course anymore. We, uh, at the, in the past, we, needed be, need, we usually need a basic market survey plus rate in the market, it would be easy to find counterfeit pr products everywhere, but now uh, the situation is different. Uh, you know that police, uh, state police, uh, rarely investigates because they have other priorities. Federal police uh, is not in charge of these investigations, only if there is a multi-state criminal activity involved, and this is very difficult to prove, only in some situations, and uh, I don't know if you, if you read, read the newspaper, Brazilian newspaper in the past weeks, uh, federal police is very busy handling the investigation in, against the entire political uh, players in Brazil, including our former president, Lula. Uh, so uh, we need uh, to have an attention on that, and the companies need to provide and to establish their own investigation to uh, cover this uh, fail from the police. The poor results uh, it's, uh, obtained by the police is because they are very broad in the investigations. They, they don't focus on uh, the, the, the matter that is important for us is that the IP violation, the IP infringement. Also, there are very strong leaking possibilities uh, I had many, many different times when I addressed some kind of investigation to the state police and uh, the information that I gave to them leaked. Uh, we, we didn't manage to make the raid. We, we found another way to conclude the raid, uh, waiting a little bit more to, 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 to run uh, the action. And may, most of all, uh, I think there was mention here uh, yesterday, Corruption is uh, a pain in Brazil. It's really in course in Brazil, mainly in the state of Sao Paulo. Uh, I public, public, publicly no, uh, notified the, the National Council to Fight Piracy in Brazil, uh, which have seats in the middle of the Ministry of Justice in one of the meetings about the corruption in the state police in Sao Paulo. It's something that uh, it's not allowing the lawyers, I, I see some Brazilian lawyers here, uh, not only Alberto, uh, and uh, we, are, we are facing a lot of problems while enforcing uh, something in Sao Paulo area. So uh, the, the, the lawyer has to be a lot of creativity to find other ways and other strategy to address correctly the action in Sao Paulo. Uh, I will give you some examples. It's not only in Sao Paulo. 
Uh, I had a case uh, for New Year. New Year authorized me to, to talk about this case. We started with an investigation request uh, before the, the police department located in Apucarana City. Apucarana City is known as the cap city in Brazil. They, pr they, they produce caps, mostly counterfeit. And uh, the first strategy will be police inquiry directed to this police department. But after six months, uh, we realized that nothing was going on. So what we did, we, f we, we went to the, the GAECO unit, is a division from the public prosecutor specializing in, in criminal organizations. And we, we, we presented a, a facts that something was happening there and we needed their work. So GAECO units from the state of uh, Paraná and Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro worked together. And after six months, we finally uh, uh, raided the main target uh, located in Apucanana. Actually, uh, during this uh, action, uh, the entire police department was arrested, including the head of the police department. The chief commissioner of the, pol the, the police department was arrested, and all the customs, uh, all the, the, the police officers as well. The mayor's wife was arrested because uh, they are receiving the police and, and the, the mayor's wa uh, wife, they were involved in receiving money to protect the factories, especially the factory that I, we were, were trying to raid. Uh, so we managed to seize them uh, two, six months later. Two million products were seized. Uh, 500,000 reais in checks uh, were seized as well. And a phone interception organized by the public prosecutor uh, revealed a negotiation of a farm, a local farm, for 45 million reais, uh, which means that this activity is, is not a poor activity. They, uh, it generates a lot of money. So these are some of the notice uh, that we have from this operation. Sorry, it's in Portuguese, but you can probably can. Something happening here. Can you move forward, please? Okay, thank you. So uh, they block the, the assets from the factory because they were negotiating uh, laundry, they were making la money laundering from the, the profit from this illegal activity to buy properties. So this is the head of the police arrested. And the protection gave from him to the, the factory. Well, uh, entering uh, more deeply in the, 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 the issue that we have to discuss, I will bring you uh, some research techniques uh, and I will give you later some examples of what we can do uh, in Brazil. Please, uh, don't feel that this is uh, generally applied for other countries. It's something that we uh, establish in Brazil as, a, as a, our, our, our uh, procedure uh, to investigate. Uh, it's, uh, I want to make clear that anything that is illegal is immediately discarded, including uh, data that can reveal intellectual property or protected information from other companies. So we use only available database and other information that anyone could obtain. First and foremost, uh, request training. It is the most important thing for everyone that is looking for a good investigation. Uh, request training from brand owners. And each one have uh, different kinds of, uh, of, uh, of information to provide you in, with respect to the difference between genuine and fake products. Use business intelligence. What I mean with business intelligence? It's intelligence coming from the group, from your client. Uh, they, they, uh, the client probably works with licensees, with franchisees, 
And, and this information is very important to, to begin a case. Use informants network. If it, is pro, if it is possible for you to establish a, a net of informants in the marketplace, uh, this will be great for you to obtain information. Uh, start with due diligence and compliance, uh, making any kind of research uh, about the company, uh, documents, uh, trade uh, agreements, uh, any kind of commercial information about the company or individual. Uh, try to organize some background checks to check uh, the people that you are dealing with, if there is any political connection, any protection in the family, if there is any, any police agent protecting this, uh, if there is a brother, sister, a cousin, uh, an uncle that are protecting uh, any illegal activity. Check the prices involved. Generally, according to a research made by Angardi, prices are 50 or less percent, uh, less than the, the, pro the original product, so this is a very good indicative. Check disclaimers on IP rights like copyright, trademark, etc. Check list of licensees and authorized companies. If it is not a licensee or authorized company, you probably discard this from a, the legal group of companies that are authorized to manufacture, distribute, or sell the counterfeit the products. And establish some kind of crossing information about every data obtained so far. So this is some of the basic uh, is a checklist for you to act in terms of investigation in Brazil. Then you, uh, with all this information uh, on hand, it's possible to organize market surveys uh, to check uh, existing counterfeit products, a sample uh, or internet survey if it is not available in the hard, uh, in, as a hard good. You can go in the internet and, and, and buy the products. Uh, conduct like an, uh, what I call immersion in the target or target area. It's important sometimes. Only doing this, it's possible to raise information about the infringement. Use specialized equipment and technology. Uh, everyone that wants to, to go deeper in this field, you need to have uh, hidden cameras, hidden uh, movie machines, movie makers machine. Uh, you have to have uh, sy tracking systems to identify cars and trace them, uh, what they are doing. Uh, take photos and, and make videos about people, cars, license plates, everything else. Uh, of course, uh, I, 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 can, I cannot forget the investigations uh, coming uh, from customs. Uh, uh, Travis. Uh, very gently mentioned this uh, in his previous presentation. It's something that we definitely focus on. Uh, we, we consult the invoices coming from customs just to uh, have more information about uh, the, the connections. And uh, in view of the, the lack of police investigations, the private investigations must be detailed in order to meet uh, judicial requirement. So wh what I mean with this, uh, because since the police doesn't investigate, and since it's hard to work with the police sometimes, it's much better for you to have a very good investigation beforehand, and then find deeper uh, evidence about the infringement to offer the courts as an alternative. And this is what happening in Brazil right now. Since we cannot work with the police most of the times, we need to address our requirement before the police departments, uh, I'm sorry, police, uh, public prosecutors and, and courts, and, but them will uh, require much more detailed information about the infringement in order to authorize a kind of raid or seizure at the place you want. So it's important to make sample acquisition on site or online, uh, use uh, kind of front companies to establish connection with the person, individual, or the company with the fake product. Uh, it's important to use a front company to order the products because sometimes they don't even accept uh, a, a law firm or individual uh, making the purchase. Produce a notarial certificate that has public faith uh, to, to demonstrate that the, the, the purchase uh, was made uh, in, in a correct way. 
uh, trace, uh, especially online, from online uh, uh, acquisition, uh, the bank account that is used for the deposit of the mon money, the, the wire transfer, uh, find eventual hidden names and addresses because it's very common. They give you only a, a name just for, for, for uh, try to, to move you out from the original line of investigation. Request private lab uh, to examine the product. So this is very common in Brazil, especially for patent uh, litigation uh, and some kind of uh, uh, industrial design and, and trademark as well. And sometimes organize the raid and the seizure to generate more information about the infringement and, and go on with a deeper investigation coming from this. Well, how to prove counterfeit? Uh, in Brazil, most often intellectual property crimes are part of, intellectual property are part of physical objects uh, in which a mechanic body supports a mystic body. So it's common to have this more related to uh, uh, copyrights in the US and derechos autorais in Brazil, but it's true also for uh, trademarks. As a rule, violation of intangible property leave trace or evidence, and some of the exceptions are present in, in Article 195 of the, the Brazilian Industrial Property Law. Therefore, uh, it is required to obtain the material, materiality of the crime. The, there, is a, there, there is need to have, there is the need of having a proof, a formal proof produced by experts, uh, indicated or not by the, by the judge, or by the police experts, uh, to obtain the confirmation of the crime. Without this, there is no criminal action uh, further. Uh, so this binomial authorship the, the, the responsible, the individual responsible for the crime and the materiality is essential. And a, and a parenthesis here is necessary. In Brazil, unfortunately, for the crimes of IP uh, violation, there is no liability against companies, so only against individuals. So uh, what you need to have in mind to uh, prove that the, the product is counterfeit, show the price differentiation uh, as I told you before, it's, uh, according to a research, is 50% or less from the original genuine, original product. Show absence of authorization, uh, allowing the company to manufacture or distribute or sell the counterfeit products, product or import as well. Show unfair competition, uh, that all this situation is causing an unfair competition practice uh, and this has to be solved eventually show profit intention. Uh, w when you're importing an illegal product, when you're doing something uh, in terms of uh, reproducing or distributing any kind of product containing violation of IP, uh, you probably have profit intention because you want to sell them and make a lot of money. And they do make a lot of money. Uh, confirm illegal activity by forensic expert examination. I think this is another course of action connect individual and the co or company to il the illegal activity. This is very important for the criminal action data. And uh, the forensic analysis on the product seized. This is, these are some steps that are very important to uh, build up a very good uh, evidence uh, role. And how to collect evidence for, uh, to turn facts into enforcement. And this is the last uh, part of my presentation. I will give just some examples uh, of some kind of industries that made exactly this step-by-step -step work in order to find uh, counterfeiters that were producing counterfeit products in Brazil. Well, uh, I will mention first the handbags and wallets, uh, uh, luxury goods sector in Brazil. It's known uh, that there are many different areas in Brazil dedicated to produce uh, luxury goods. Uh, but one specifically uh, stands out from the others uh, because of his, its high concentration of this type of factories in Brazil compar in comparison with other regions. Uh, this region is Franca in the interior of Sao Paulo and the surrounding cities because 
when the, uh, the, the, the serious companies decide to start an enforcement action there, a campaign against counterfeiting, uh, these companies, they begin to migrate from Franca to the satellite cities surrounding. So, uh, what was uh, the investigation schedule used in this case? First, uh, it started with a market survey. Uh, we went to the market to check the products to see if there was any connection from, with the market in, in another area. Uh, we found some products at 25 de Marso. So since uh, uh, it's, it was not our goal seizing the products at 25 de Marso, we decided to make the sample acquisition for f further investigation. We, uh, in this case, we tried to find the transportation methods to deliver the products to 25 de Marso. We found uh, actual players, the individuals uh, responsible for uh, bringing the transportation, bringing the products to, to Brazil, to 25 de Marso, the, the whole city area in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, capital of, Brazil, of, of state of Sao Paulo. And uh, we, we obtained pro proof and evidence regarding the vehicles used, license plates, and individuals. Uh, after that, we ran to the city that was providing this. It was Franca. We made a, conducted an on-site confirmation on the, source, on the source. You have to go to the state, to the city, to the branch, uh, and go up to the street level to check uh, from where the products are coming. Conduct uh, interviews. Uh, we, we sometimes we do that. We conduct interviews from the neighboring area, in the neighboring area, with the neighbors, uh, to check if something is operating in a certain specific uh, address, uh, or we, if it is open to the public, we organize a, a factory visit to check uh, any kind of existence of mater illegal material there. Uh, if there is something, we make pictures, hidden pictures, uh, make movies, uh, and then when while we come back to the office, we make cross-examination on this, on the commercial records involving this company, uh, and we conduct also another sample acquisition to firm to confirm uh, the the what's going on and if this company is really selling uh, the product. Uh, of course. Uh, we can't do this individually, uh, as an individual, and sometimes we use the front companies to do that. So, as a result, uh, more than, after this investigation, more than 20 factories have been raided by a major uh, Brazilian manufacturer of luxury goods. Uh, seizure involved uh, more than 1.5 million products. Uh, after two years of work, uh, reduction to, from 75% to less than 50% in the piracy activity in the area. And curiously, the number of counterfeit products from a French uh, manufacturer increased exponentially in the region. Why? Because w when a company is inactive, it loses. Uh, uh, of course, the, the pirates, they will migrate uh, from the, the brand that is doing something effectively to another that is doing nothing. So this is, is a very classical situation in Brazil. Uh, if they lose uh, uh, from very, uh, a, lot, a big quantity of money from a company involving some brand, they immediately migrate to uh, produce counterfeit products from another brand. This is classical. So these are some of the factories visited and raided. I'll show you quickly, because I believe I, I'm in the final minutes from my presentation. These are from Vitor Hugo, he's a Brazilian uh, huge producer of handbags and wallets. Uh, there is another example from the hardware sector. Apucarana is uh, known as the cap capital in Brazil. Uh, uh, it produces uh, like 85 to 90 percent of the counterfeit caps in Brazil. And uh, out from the estimated 500 factories actively, actively operating in the city, 95 percent are involved somehow with counterfeiting activity of caps. 
Uh, in this case, the, the approach was a little bit different. The client came to us with an information about retailers uh, selling products in Sao Paulo area. Not 25 de Mars, or different area. So we, we raided the retailers in order to raise some information about the infringement. Uh, we seized the invoices coming from this uh, retailer. We conduct a cross-examination on past trades involving this specific retailer. We, we found a potential targets uh, in the city of Apucarana. So when you, you are in front of information of, like that, it's, it's not easy because you, you, you only have a connection, but you, you, you need to have some kind of uh, hard proof that the other companies that are connected to the activity are really involved in the, the illegal activity. So, so after six months uh, of immersion in Apucarana, immersion I mean this time, sending someone from the investigation group that we have inside the firm uh, to the region to stay there and uh, leave, uh, leave the life in the region and try to find uh, connections between the companies that we've, we've raided in Sao Paulo, try to find the operators, uh, try to find the videos, have information from people, uh, co common people, and, and this again, uh, it, it's something that uh, we cannot do for a hundred bucks, you know? It's very deep work, it's a very intensive work, so this is why some kind of estimate of legal fees or investigation fees in this case has to be higher, has to be higher. And, and the clients, uh, I think it's something that served for all of you that has offices and law firms in your countries. Uh, the, the client has to understand it's a different activity. Not only going to the market, buy the, purchase the, the counterfeit product, product and organize the raid. This is deep. Uh, so we obtained a video and photo evidence from the, cr from the criminal activity. And we conducted another sample acquisition from the front company. By, through the front company. And of course, uh, several raids uh, coming from this investigation were seized over three years, including last year, uh, seizures in 22 factories and three million products seized uh, to New Year, is one of the main clients at this uh, segment. Uh, organized crime, crime millionaires, as I told you before, police arrested and connections with three other states were some of the challenges found in this work. Uh, and the reduction of uh, piracy levels were, was really noticed, including by the client. And this is important for all of you. You have to show the client that your work is improving, is giving him good results. It's not only a question of doing the work, uh, sending invoices, uh, you have to show that it's working. What you suggested has worked well. So this is one of the factors. You can see the size of this place. All of it dedicated to manufacturing counterfeit products, counterfeit caps. It's a professional activity. It's an organized crime. It's not for, for people that don't know what they want to do. They have uh, very specialized equipment, very modern. These are some of the products that were seized, raw material assembling material. A lot of works almost packed to, to be sold. This is another factory. Other brands involved as well. I saved some pictures because there are many, many different pictures and other many brands involved in this operation. So you can, you can check the size of the compass. It, it's a professional work. Uh, regarding footwear, uh, I think I'm, is the last one. Uh, if, if someone is looking to buy a cheap or a fake footwear in Brazil, the right place is Nova Serrana. Although uh, Franca is also producing uh, counterfeit shoes, but uh, only m most uh, leather products uh, in Franca. And in Nova Serrana, they, they are dedicated to sneakers, famous brands of sneakers. 
So uh, this is a multi-state illegal organization uh, that have been identified in the last uh, raids organized in the region, indicated that the strong uh, capillarity of the local industry uh, since the counterfeit products are distributed nationwide. These products are no, not only sold regionally, they are sold to the south region, to the central region, to the north region, northeastern region, southeast region, so they go everywhere, to all uh, flea markets, all markets established over the capitals. 80% uh, of the factories are dedicated somehow to produce counterfeit uh, products. Uh, the line of investigation used in this case was a little bit different. Uh, we had uh, an internet survey trying to find a connection about the seller and the factory. We, we established some sample acquisition. We worked on, on the company and individual data search to, to cross information between the individuals and the companies they were part of. Uh, we made a bank account verification coming out from the, the purchase we made in the internet. Uh, we organized an on-site confirmation on the source uh, to, to check the state, the city, the branch, and verify the street level to obtain the address, specific address of the company. Uh, and the factory was visited with a hidden camera. This time we didn't need to trace, uh, use any tracking system to find them because it was a little bit easier. So these are some of the <clears throat> products seized. They made flip-flops. It's just one of the kinds, uh, different kinds of products that are produced there. And uh, finally, raw material. Uh, I think that <clears throat> no raid, no seizure is completed if you don't go after raw material used to manufacture the product. So uh, what we do is try to develop spin-off cases coming from the factory raids. Uh, and, and, and this may major because of my initial comments about the depreciation of our Brazilian currency uh, in the last uh, two years uh, that is, uh, is moving up the counterfeiters to find uh, providers of raw, mat raw material inside Brazil, not abroad, not in China. So this meets uh, with the Brazilian reality and, and role uh, that for production of counterfeit products nowadays. And it saves money and increases logistics uh, because of the, 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 the proximity from the factory and the raw material factory. Uh, this enables us to increase the spin-off case in the, the last five years. Uh, and the indictment in this case coming from the public prosecutor or coming from your private criminal action in case of trademark infringement uh, deals with also uh, criminal organization arguments. So this is very important. Uh, the kind of uh, investigation schedule was uh, simple in this case. Why we are inside a company that is manufacturing counterfeit products, it's easy for you to take a look in the material, in the, all the documents related to, to the company, and, and ask the authority, uh, mostly the, the police, if you can work, uh, if there is no corruption going on, uh, with the pump prosecutor or the judge, ask them to seize any, any kind of uh, trade uh, documents, invoices, everything else related to economic activity of the company. And uh, uh, while having this information, we conduct uh, on-site confirmation on the source, uh, go after the street uh, and the address that is uh, me being mentioned in the invoices, and use uh, sometimes tracking system with the cars that are inside the factory because some of these cars are used to get products in the raw material factory or vice versa. 
some, some of the raids we developed uh, last year, we found cars from the distributor of raw material inside the company raided, the major company raided, so we managed to track it and find the right address of the company, of the raw material company factory. And, uh, and we, we visit the factory uh, with a hidden camera to uh, produce evidence on the infringement and to show the other, uh, the, the authorities, uh, this, what's going on there. This is uh, some leather, some material uh, fabric used inside the, these bags that we seized. More fabric, metal parts, so different factories. One dedicated to manufacture fabric for inside the bags. Uh, this one, a different one, uh, dedicated to f fabricate the metal uh, fr to the bag. You can see the quantity of bags they will be producing with this raw material. More. So these are the molds used to produce the metal parts. The, the, the ovens use it to, uh, you know, uh, heat the, the material. Millions of products. These are the, the stickers and other uh, tags used for new, to manufacture new ear caps. This is a provider uh, of uh, paper, paper products to the caps. These are the stickers. You can see other brands over there. So many different brands. Again, stickers. Another brand, another brand. UFC, Polo, Oakley, Polo. A lot of uh, fabric to put inside the cap. And these are the, the main uh, uh, standards to produce the embroidering uh, part of the production. They, they insert this in the embroidering, uh, in a full uh, house of embroidery machine, and they put this there, uh, and the machine simply embroid the caps after uh, the cap is in order to do that. These are other stuff from uh, f fabric. And that's it. I hope that I have uh, give you any, uh, uh, some kind of information about what's happening in Brazil. And I uh, will be pleased to answer your question. Thank you all very much. Muchas gracias, Werner. Si, sin duda, Tú nos colocaste grandes uh, uh, tips ahí para, no solo para los brasileños, para, para todos los países de cómo hacer una buena investigación. Es impresionante el crecimiento de la piratería en, en Brasil y cómo es difícil el enforcement, es peligroso también, uh, dado las actividades criminales. Uh, bueno, tenemos todavía 10 minutos, 15 minutos, así que si me lo pongo la palabra a disposición. Si alguien quiere hacer una pregunta a uno de los panelistas... Por favor, la palabra está abierta. Segundo día. Uh, Travis, I have a question that sort of combines your two presentations. I wasn't aware of the uh, bank card route that you uh, addressed yesterday, and I'm wondering how successful that has been in China, and to what extent the uh, level of investigation and quality of evidence that you get in China plays in, in being successful there. Uh, I was gonna say, the, uh, the, the level of cooperation that we get in China uh, unfortunately, is not quite as high as we would uh, we would certainly like to see. Uh, I was going to say the the 
Yeah, credit card companies and the money transfer companies themselves have been uh, very cooperative, uh, both directly with us and with yeah, law enforcement partners, you know, here and in uh, uh, other jurisdictions, including China. Uh, the system that we have in place with with Roadblock is uh, essentially designed for uh, enforcement and mitigation within the the payment system itself. is not designed for uh, follow-up investigation and and you know, uh, civil litigation. Uh, you know, that was you know was not the intent when we created it. So we uh, don't have uh, a significant pipeline of information back from uh, the the financial service providers. Uh, we do, however, hear frequently from uh, the banks uh, in China that are involved. Uh, you know, part of the way that the uh, credit card and money transfer system works. You know the uh, merchant banks that are responsible for uh, bringing the merchants on board, uh, you know, and in those cases where the the merchants are in fact uh, engaged in illicit activity, uh, are exposed to significant fines from uh, the the credit card companies and the yeah you know, the payment providers. So shortly after we began operating the system. Uh, we began hearing directly from some of the banks who were involved uh, regarding the uh, extremely substantial fines, in some cases well over uh, you know, six figures uh, that, that they were experiencing. So we know, uh, we, you know we, we have the ability to uh, identify a lot of the banks through, you know, through their own outreach to us, uh, attempting to mitigate some of the problems. Uh, you know, we've had direct uh, Involvement and engagement with a number of banks you know, throughout China at this point, uh, actually seeking assistance in uh, you know developing best practices for onboarding uh, you know potential new clients and merchants. Uh, you know we've we've you know been able to establish some relationships in that way to get uh, information back. On the whole, though, I would say that you know it's uh, e extremely difficult working with the, the Chinese financial system, uh, in part because of the, the bank secrecy laws, which was uh, one of the issues that you know, arose in the, uh, the Gucci and Tiffany cases that I uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, the, the laws that are in place at the moment expose you know, Chinese banks to uh, you know, significant liability uh, from uh, both their own domestic consumers and users, as well as the, the Chinese government, uh, you know, depending on the, the sort of information that they uh, might provide. It's you know, certainly something that we're looking to expand upon, uh, but at this point, it's uh, rather limited. Diana, creo que se apuntó primero, ¿no? Por favor. Micrófono. Oh, oh, oh. Bueno. Gracias, Paulo. Sí, um, well, in English, <laughs> um, in terms of um, the information given by Jose Enrique, uh, which was very valuable. I mean, it's interesting to see all the investigations that are conducted in Brazil. Uh, in order to find the crime, the material uh, proof of the crime. Um, now, I would like to ask you about enforcement. Once you obtain the material, how quickly could you obtain the order, the seizure order? I know there are difficulties, um, but you know, I would like to hear from you uh, because I know the extensive investigations cost a lot of money. So it would be nice to know, you know, how quickly can you obtain the order? So uh, thank you for the questions and for the comments. Uh, uh, your question is about how is the, the rate following the, the, the investigations? Yeah, <clears throat> in Brazil, it's, uh, the, the options will be for sure civil litigation. So you can obtain <clears throat> in the civil arena uh, kind of uh, injunctions to to have the seizure of the products and then mix it with with uh, indemnification repair of damages. Now it's being changed because of the new <coughs> sorry new launching of the new uh, civil procedure code in Brazil, 
And I believe that this will be a little bit different in the future with this new uh, legislation uh, that will come into force uh, in five, three days, uh, March 18. Uh, it will be difficult for the brand owners to ask civil injunctions because they will probably have to uh, uh, deposit a guarantee that nothing wrong will happen with the seized goods. Okay, so this is a little uh, is a little bit complication for civil procedures, civil injunctions. Uh, but of course, we have uh, anticipation of proof. There is another kind of injunction that is is possible to find in, to file in Brazil to obtain information uh, from a specific activity. Uh, in the criminal arena, you have uh, both the police inquiry in which we, we address a complaint to the police department uh, to investigate, investigate, <laughs> because you give the investigation ready for them, uh, and they, they enforce this with uh, like a simple order coming from the very police department that you requested information, requested action. Uh, you have a private criminal uh, injunction, you, you have, I'm sorry, criminal injunction uh, uh, a private criminal injunction when you have uh, brand involved, when you have trademark uh, and, other, and the other institutes from the, 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 the industrial property law involved, like trademarks, uh, industrial designs, patents, unfair competition. So when you have these institutes involved, you have to go to a, a, a criminal procedure uh, in a pre preliminary procedure is a criminal act, uh, injunction, followed by a private criminal action that is, has to be, f uh, as a plaintiff, the brand owner. And uh, on the other side, you have, uh, for copyright uh, violations, you have a public prosecutor uh, offering uh, the criminal, the criminal uh, accusation. is uh, the criminal, public criminal action. Is, is more likely to be applied for a copyright uh, violation. So uh, they are relatively easy to be obtained if you, if you try to gather elements uh, from the, the streets, from the street level, from the internet, uh, producing any kind of uh, legal evidence, uh, like a um, notarial, for, for instance, you are, will be in a position to make this evidence to the judge or to the public prosecutor to authorize you uh, to have the, the, the criminal injunction in place or the seizure in place. So I'm not, I'm not sure if I answer your question, but if not, please let me know. Thank you. Paulo, por favor. Uh, Paulo Parente from Brazil. Uh, first of all, congratulations for your presentation. Really, really good. Uh, but uh, I would like to understand a little bit when you're talking about uh, uh, tax information, uh, banking, banking account. Uh, I would like to know how did you get it? How did you get this this information from from the bank? For example, we have a, a tax uh, 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 confidential sigilo uh, fiscal. How can I say that in English? I, f I forget that. But uh, I would like to, to you to explain a little bit more, you know. And thank you, Paulo. Are you addressing the? I address to, this uh, of, of course for Verne from Brazil. Ah, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Paulo. Thank you for your question. Uh, yes, uh, w what we do online uh, while conducting online uh, purchase, uh, you have there is no. Uh, other way to have the ac an account for you to de make a deposit, a wire transfer, okay? So we, when you make a wire transfer, you, you have the number of account of this individual, okay? You, you won't go fast, uh, further on this. Just getting the account, the account, the name of the person there, so that you can cross this information about the name of the, the owner of this account with all information that we raised before. Of course, and you are right with your question, if we need to open up uh, what is inside the bank account, then we need a court order authorizing us to do that. So it's express. 
uh, it's express requirement. You, you have to ask the public prosecutor, the public prosecutor has to uh, uh, agree that something wrong is going on, and uh, after that, he will require to the judge an author authorization to, uh, to make a, a bank account interception, to, to open up uh, what's going on, the transactions that he has made. It's simply as that. Thank you. Any further questions? Alguna? Acá, por favor. Micrófono para el vocal tercero. Thank you. Uh, Jose Enrique, thank, uh, congratulations. Thank you for the presentation. Very, very useful. I have one, one quick question. From, from the rates you, you show there, there are some very specific and complex equipment that used, was used in some of them for the counterfeiting, for the producing of the counterfeit goods. Could you seize those, those equipment, those machines, or, or is it possible to, to do that in, 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 in the course of this, these actions to, to prevent you know, further production of counterfeit goods? Thank you, Matthias. A very good question. Uh, actually, uh, the, the, the capability of the company, a brand owner, to seize the machines will be connected uh, directly to uh, what is being produced with these machines. Uh, the, there is a rule in Brazil that the only property, uh, the only real property from someone cannot be seized or uh, put in, in, uh, out from his possession. Uh, because it's a place that he has to live on, or, uh, you know, yeah, uh, it's impossible to, to, it's a constitutional right. It's, uh, it's impossible to seize or, or put, put, raid this uh, property uh, because it's his own property. He's only one property. And the same uh, intelligence is applied to this uh, machinery seizure. If the guy has only the factory, that is, is actively producing products for his, uh, uh, for his sur surviving, uh, for his making money with the, out from the, the production. If it is only produ producing illegal products, they, they probably authorize you to seize. But it's rare. It's rare because they not only produce illegal products, they, they have one or other products with their own trademarks, uh, that they produce as well, or authorized production that were ordered by a third company, and some, sometimes the judges don't authorize this. But if you prove that essentially the activity of the company is used for illegal activity, then you can do that. Uh, but of course, you have to, to, to have uh, the other side, a very smart judge that will, will understand what you, you mean, and have uh, uh, you know the authority to determine the seizure of the machines. What we, we generally do, we don't seize the machines, but um, for instance, we, we, we organized a seizure of sneakers in the past in, in that city that I mentioned, and uh, we didn't seize the machines, but we seized the molds of the souls, you know? Uh, they, they came with the brands, so they, they the, the weight was, they were very heavy, about one ton of uh, molds, uh, iron molds, uh, and this is very difficult to remove from, from, the, from the company when, when you're ready. But this is also possible because the mold itself, it costs him, the, the, the owner of the factory, millions, uh, millions of reais or something like that. So this is another option instead of seizing the, the, the machinery. And if you go several times to the same place and do several raids on, on a certain period of time, is that a, like a presumption that he's doing? Do, uh, you mean uh, if it is effective just one or if I need to return there to... Yeah, you return several times. Yeah, so, some, 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 some of them, they, they continue to do the, the work. If, if it is easy to uh, produce other modes or to, to uh, have the modes from someone else that is also producing, they can, they, they do, you know, uh, well, pirates are very organized, they have a connection between them. So they, they, it's easy for them to ask, oh, please, give me a mold for uh, Oakley. 
I need to produce some, some, some uh, shoes uh, with Oak Oakley, Oakley soles. And they do this between them. So sometimes you have to go back and seize them again. But uh, we hope that, and this, it's a very good question because it, it leads us to, to another discussion that's very common with our clients. Nothing will, will happen if we develop all of this work and you raid companies just once and you stop. When the, when the brand owner has, not, uh, has, has nothing in, in his mind that keeps him doing something to, uh, you know, intensively fight piracy in a, in a, in a, in a very frequent basis, uh, the activity will return, for sure, you know? And, and this is why we always recommend clients not only the criminal arena uh, enforcement, but also the civil arena. Because in the, the criminal arena, it's good because it's fast, you can raid everything without discussion, but the, the repair of damage is not included. And the, and the, the penalty for, for the company for doing again the, the illegal activity is not there in the criminal arena. So we have to combine criminal enforcement with civil enforcement uh, to have a, a less standing uh, result from, from your action. You know, and keep the raids going on, even if uh, it is not at the same company, but in the region, you know, to show everyone that the company is very, very insistent in doing the program. Uh, just briefly, uh, yeah, we're very similar in the U.S., although I think we're a little bit more vindictive in those cases. Uh, the federal statute and uh, the U.S. provides explicitly for seizure and forfeiture of not only instrumentalities, but proceeds as well. It uh, doesn't matter if they're using the machines for other business, uh, you know, the machines that are producing the goods, the building where they're being produced, vehicles that are used to transport the goods, uh, all of that would be fair game, as well as personal vehicles, any property, you know, homes, other... Uh, other personal property that could be traced back to the proceeds of the criminal activity uh, would all be fair game, you know, for forfeiture, uh, and would be, you know, and all, most likely would, you know, sold at auction. Uh, I was going to say state law tends to differ a little bit and is a bit more sympathetic, probably more in line with uh, the Brazilian law, where if it's a, you know, a personal vehicle that's needed to, you know, provide transportation to work, or is uh, co-owned by a spouse, or it's a personal residence. Uh, may not be subject to forfeiture, but uh, under the federal statute, by and large, yeah, yeah, anything would be fair game. So thank you, Trav Travis. Thank you, Werner. We are five minutes ahead, so I will close the questions. And thank you for all to be here this morning. And I will invite all of you to stay for the next panel. Thank you so much.